small group tours, local experiences, behind the scenes access. Viator has spent decades finding activities in over 1,500 destinations around the globe because we believe vacations are called vacations for a reason. Your only job should be to choose between the Pinot Grigio and the Sangiovese. Decisions, decisions. Viator, travel with an insider. Traveling to Europe is about more than the destination. It's the journey. It's discovering new experiences. It's history and culture. It's awakening all five senses. I'm a waterways river cruises. Perillo Tours, helping Americans explore Italy since 1945. I'm Kathy McCabe. In this series, we'll meet the authentic characters, uncover the hidden treasures, and discover what makes Italy the most fascinating country in the world. Join me as we dream of Italy. Puglia, a land of stone walls, gargantuan gnarled olive trees, and bizarre cone-shaped stone houses. With 500 miles of coastline, Puglia is also intimately linked to the sea, both its bountiful riches and its dangers. Throughout history, its wide open coastline has brought unwanted visitors in the form of invaders who have left their mark on the rich culture here. I start my visit to Puglia in the Salento, the heel of Italy's boot. The Salento is a place filled with unexpected treasures, and one of those is the captivating Baroque city of Lecce, known as the Florence of the South. I'm lucky to get a very special tour of the city with local resident Tonino Benincasa in his 1935 Morris Model 8. Allora qui siamo nel cuore, nel cuore di Lecce, Piazza Santo Ronzo, eccolo lì il santo. Lecce è famoso nel mondo per il barocco. Può darsi che ci sia un collegamento per la gentilezza, per l'eleganza, non solo eh, dei monumenti leccesi. Puglia's history of invasion has echoes everywhere. Anche perché tieni presente che noi siamo il frutto di un miscuglio di razze che non finisce più. <laughs> perché essendo una lingua di terra in mezzo al mare, il Salento, no? tutti quanti sbarcavano qui. Quindi sbarcavano, depredavano, rapivano, andavano via, oppure si stabilivano qui. Quindi le razze si incrociavano. Tu trovi qui il biondo con gli occhi azzurri, o trovi quello eh, piuttosto scuro di carnagione, capelli crespi. Ecco, quando, quando giri per Lecce, nei dintorni di Lecce, c'è un senso di calma, di pace, di tranquillità. Questo intendo per sonnolenza. Questo è un ex alunno, per esempio. <laughs> Ciao, non posso salutarti, alla prossima. <laughs> è tutto tranquillo, nessuno va di corsa, tutti quanti vanno a ritmi blandi, forse per apprezzare al massimo le bellezze di questa città e anche il clima. Driving around, it's hard not to notice something remarkable about Lecce. The historic center is constructed almost entirely from the same material, known as Lecce stone, or Pietro Leccese. Lecce stone is a local limestone and lends itself to use as both a structural and decorative material. And although the city's history dates back to Roman times, Lecce's city center was largely constructed in a 100-year burst of activity by its Spanish rulers in the mid-17th century. As Tonino points out, there is a peacefulness to Lecce, a quiet, calm quality that you don't expect in a city. But as the day changes to night, 
Leche is transformed into an open air party. Every weekend throughout the year, the Lechese flock to the historic center and engage in one of the grandest passeggiadas in all of Italy. The passeggiada is the nightly stroll most Italians take, usually before and sometimes after dinner. But here in Lecce, it is an obsession with the entire city, young and old, coming out. And in the midst of this mad rush of people, I find the workshop of the Riso brothers, masters in the art of paper mache. Paper mache was introduced to Italy from Spain in the late 17th century. It had a practical purpose to create lightweight icons for Italy's sometimes days long religious processions. After all, carrying marble or bronze statues is hard work. The Riso brothers make small versions of these traditional religious icons, but they are also well known for their depictions of peasant life. Fra questi, il soggetto che adesso è diventato più famoso è la ballerina di Pizzica, la danza popolare salentina, famosa anche come Taranta. Giuseppe starts the process with a wire skeleton and a body made of straw. Si cerca di stringere il più possibile la paglia al ferro e rendere la statua più stabile possibile. Giuseppe adds the terracotta head, hands and feet, handcrafted by his brother Claudio. Testa, mani e piedi sono sempre modellati da noi, alcune parti sono abbozzate con il calco, però come stavo facendo adesso sono rifinite, riprese, rimodellate, il calco serve solamente come base, perché non esistono mai due teste una una uguale all'altra. From beginning to end, a figure can take as long as 15 days to make, as work must stop and start to allow for drying. Poi vengono imbevuti questi fogli di carta e si danno degli strati sulla paglia per consolidare la struttura. Giuseppe crafts the clothing for the peasants. Questa è la fase del vestito che è quella più appariscente, che è quella che decide l'impostazione, quello che poi diventerà finale la statua. In questo caso sarà una coppietta di anziani sotto braccio che a Lecce anche si usa come anniversario di nozze ai 50 anni di matrimonio. In the final step, brother Sandro delicately paints the fine, lifelike features. Beh, in effetti la, la statua religiosa deve rispettare alcuni canoni, che sono quelli già ordinati dalla storia, dall'arte, in questo caso i colori, per esempio, questi sono colori quasi obbligatori, quella della, della Madonna, che è l'azzurro, il rosa o il, o il blu per il San Giuseppe. The brothers' passion and attention to detail attracts visitors from all over the world who want to take home a very special piece of history from Lecce. Ovviamente, nel corso dei secoli, con l'abilità e col perfezionarsi di alcuni artigiani, è diventato un artigianato di prestigio. Lecce is a beautiful city but I am eager to leave the crowds and big buildings and go into the countryside, il paese, and travel even deeper into the Salento. In the past, traditional rural life in Puglia centered around the Masseria. These fortified farming estates once operated as small villages where the landowner lived in the main house and the farm workers stayed in the surrounding buildings. Today, most of them have been converted to guest houses and B&Bs, and they are a perfect place to dive deep into rustic Pugliese cuisine. At the Maseria Provenzani, my friend Yelenia Sambati introduces me to Mama Giulia. Mama Giulia is going to teach me how to make orecchetti cime de rappe. Very famous and traditional Puglia recipe. So you cannot say that you have been to Puglia unless you have tasted taralli and orecchette. Orecchette means uh, like little here actually. In making this pasta we don't use eggs. So it's just uh, okay. flour, water and a pinch of salt. Okay, so let's get started. Vai Mama Giulia, siamo pronti. The recipe is simple, the but the technique is more challenging. 
big Vulcan or cratere. We create a crater of flour and add a pinch of salt. And then we pour the water in just yes. to cover the bottom. Yes. Ah. <laughs> so we make sure that mine is escaping. <laughs> The pasta is kneaded to create the right density and texture. I need help. <laughs> ah, I see. Make it thinner. Maybe it's a rotund. Okay, not bad. <laughs> when the pasta is ready, it's rolled out and cut, and the orecchetti shape is formed. You roll the oblique knife and you roll it until the end of the dough. You roll, 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 roll until the end of the dough. Okay. And now what do I do? You reverse your knife and you put the teeth of the knife in front of you. Yes, and then finger and come. Ah. Ma guarda che brava, Kati. Hai visto? <laughs> Not too bad. Oh, Once the shapes are made and left to rest, Mama Julia shows me how to make the sauce. These greens are the chime de rape, similar to what we call broccoli rob. Starting from uh, October, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh -huh. until April, you have plenty of rape and cime di rape. I think it is the vegetable we eat most. Meanwhile, whole unpeeled garlic and hot peppers are sautéed in olive oil. Maggiore is not chopping the garlic. She's just putting it uh, in Because, all. yeah, we say that the garlic has a very aggressive taste. Uh -huh. Just mm. garlic this way and pepperoncino. After the chime de rape is cooked for about five minutes, oh with your hands, the orecchetti are put in the same water. So how does she know when it is ready? It's all on top, like the gnocchi. Okay. Ah, starting to come. Ci siamo quasi, almost there. The orecchetti and chime de rape are combined with the garlic and peppers. Ooh, I feel it. We are making magic. Pasta water is added to make a sauce. So now we make them mantecate, which means that we make sure that they are well uh, blended with the sauce. So okay, let well. it cook in its own juices. Okay. Where's the fork? Dove la forchetta, Giulia? Dove? La forchetta! It's so good. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. L'aglio non si sente molto mm. e rimane un sapore mm. delicato. No, I don't say it's not too much garlic, right? No, you get just a hint of it, just enough of it. Yeah. We're all using the same fork because we're we're good friends now. <laughs> Buona. Buona. Peperoncino okay. è perfetto. I think I'll have some more. And that is a taste of Puglia, made with a mama's love. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. If there's one thing Puglia is known for around the world, it is the Truly. The distinctive whitewashed cone-shaped houses that dot the landscape of the Itria Valley. And the greatest concentration of Truly is in the small town of Albrovello, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Native son Mimo Palmisiano grew up in these exotic houses and is an expert on their history and architecture. So where did these unusual structures originate? And why are they here? The oldest cone-shaped houses on the planet are on the border between Turkey and Syria. 1,000 years before Christ, they were already building cone-shaped construction in Turkey. Why here in Italy? Now we have the same technique. Between 1000 and 1480, for almost five centuries, Turkish people through the Mediterranean Sea trying to invade Italy. When the invading Turks, also known as the Ottomans, lost their battles, they could not return home in defeat. So they offered to work for the local ruling nobles in exchange for safe harbor. Give me a chance, don't kill me. Let me build a shelter for myself on the border of your properties. We can even become your private army. Granted land in exchange for their services, 
the Ottoman soldiers built cone-shaped homes like the ones from their homeland, and those became the model for the Trulli. While at first glance all truly look the same, there are features that are unique to each one. At the top of the cone is a shape known as the pinacolo that is actually the signature of the builder of that trullo. And the symbols on the roof are painted by the family inside to give thanks for a good harvest or good weather. People saying thank you to God, people saying thank you to nature. There are some pagan symbols, some Christian symbols, some magic symbol. The symbols are repainted often, sometimes every year. You're creative, you want to invent a symbol, you can paint on your house whatever you want. Mimo takes me inside and explains how people used to live in these houses. Now we are in a trula. Stable, living room, fireplace and kitchen is the same thing because people were cooking on fire. Hot air from fireplace, goes up, dries food, and smokes food. Let's see the children's room. Oh, there's a little window. There's a little window because there were children sleeping in the cone. In this cone, you can sleep. There's no flames, no smoke. You don't die there. I leave the hauntingly beautiful Trulli of Alborobello and head to the coast, to the former fortress of Monopoly. Local resident and former professional cyclist Antonella Lozito shows me around this gem of a town. Here she is. Hello, Hi. Kathy. How are you? Antonello. Nice meeting Ciao. you. Nice to see you. Founded by the Romans as an access point to the eastern Mediterranean, Monopoly's strategic location also made it a jumping off point for the Crusades. When the Ottomans returned the favor hundreds of years later, Monopoly found itself under attack. Was there a lot of fighting here? Uh, oh, of course. You know, you can, you, 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 can, you can understand, I guess, the destination region. Uh, the, the, the pool has been invaded pretty much by anyone. and. Uh, it's much more peaceful now, though, right? I guess it is, yes. Um. <laughs> Today, Monopoly's lovely harbor is home to the typical fishing boats of the area, known as Gozzi. And look at this. Surprise, surprise. This is the, the little arbor with some of the remaining fishermen boats. And uh, I guess it's one of the most picturesque corners in the whole of Puglia, really. Um, and of course, you can filter that. These are the words of a local, but I really, <laughs> I really think this is spectacular. So this is where the fishermen. Yes, come yes. In. We got uh, more spots around here, but this is really the nicest part, uh -huh. and because we got a little bit of the small ones and the and the big ones and all together. And um, um, but you can still go to the abbot, and meet these fishermen, and get some Bye, fish fresh. just right from there. Um, sometimes I don't realize how, how lovely that is, and yes, uh, and I feel particularly lucky. So. Um, Antonello has one more facet of Monopoly to show me. Here we go. The workshop of retired fisherman Ignazio Modio. Hello, hello. Ciao, Ignazio. Io sono monopolitana a tutti gli effetti. Sono io di Monopoli, mio padre di Monopoli, mia, mo mia madre era di Monopoli. Tutti monopolitani e ne sono orgoglioso. After a life on the water, Ignazio couldn't bear to be away from his beloved boats. So he started building models of them. In general, I'll do 34, 35 barche al mese, and non di più, perché per fare una barca richiede molto tempo, anche perché è tutta a mano, eh. Così come il corpo umano è una barchetta. È uguale al corpo umano. C'ha le costole, la spina dorsale, i remi, che sono le barche, sono le gambe. The boats are often painted bright colors for practical reasons. Questa qui l'ho dato in rosso. Il rosso qui anche rosso di sopra perché abitualmente la capitaneria di Porto dicono a noi pescatori, ai pescatori che ci deve essere il rosso perché quando c'è una mareggiata il mare diventa bianco. E allora loro 
riescono a vedere la barca se c'è da, da, da naufragarla o meno. Ignazio welcomes visitors to his workshop throughout the day. C'è sempre qualcuno che va lì per chiacchierare. Comunque, non si vive di solo pane sulla terra, ma anche di soddisfazione. E quindi ho creato queste barchette qua, che a me mi danno tanta gioia e tanta soddisfazione, indipendentemente se guadagno o non guadagno, non mi interessa. Mi interessa soltanto la gioia che tante persone si fermano a guardarle. Di niente, grazie a lei. Grazie per tutti. For my final stop in Puglia, I return to the Salento for a visit to the small town of Squinzano. Like any Italian town, the heart of life in Squinzano is the main piazza. And I am here to get a taste of one of the great treasures of southern Italy, the dance known as the Pizzica. Also called the Tarantella in other parts of Italy, it has roots going back thousands of years. Questa pizzica insomma è il nostro ballo che più ci rappresenta e che viene, veniva ballato dai nonni e dei nostri nonni, quindi è un ballo molto molto vecchio. The pizzica has served many functions over the years, but like most country dances, it is primarily a social occasion. Questo ballo è, nasce come, come forma ludica ricreativa, ci si divertiva con questo ballo. Però è anche vero, che è vero che non c'erano gli svaghi, ma non c'erano neanche molti, molti modi per cui un uomo e una donna potessero incontrarsi. Ci stavano dei segnali legati agli occhi o comunque al fazzoletto dove un uomo e una donna avevano la possibilità di comunicare e quindi di eh, diciamo, far iniziare una relazione. After a little dancing in the square, I get an offer I can't refuse. Little do I know that I'll be riding in an ape, a tiny workhorse truck that is common in the Italian countryside. With a top speed of 20 miles per hour, we tear out of town and rejoin with our musicians and a group of dancers who are waiting in an olive grove. In the past, a gathering like this would be a highlight of rural life in the Salento. Quindi tutti prendevano il proprio strumento. Chi era più bravo suonava l'organetto, il violino, la chitarra o il tamburello e altri magari accompagnavano con piccole percussioni oppure con le mani. E in realtà io mi piacerebbe tanto intendere questa cosa solo come passione. Non mi pesa, anzi è un regalo che io ho, è una fortuna che io ho perché questa, questa musica veramente è un grande dono ed è una passione che insomma, abbiamo nel, nel sangue e che non possiamo, di cui non possiamo farne a meno. Puglia è il posto che torno back to over and over to riconnect with some of the deepest traditions and warmest people in Italy. It's a place where the beauty isn't all on the surface, but the history often is. In Puglia, the olive trees are the kings, and the mamas are definitely the queens.